Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring about the cattle because we, you think about what we're saying back here in, um, in chapter, uh, chapter 3 that, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick, about Satan and the cattle. I'll read this while you're doing that, Dr. Okay. This is also another piece of scripture from the extra biblical text. These are from the Nakamati Codices, which also verify what Dr. Joy and I are talking about. This is from the Gospel of Philip. It says, First adultery came into being, afterward murder, and he was begotten in adultery, for he was the child of the serpent. So he became a murderer, just like his father, and he killed his brother. Indeed, every act of sexual intercourse which has occurred between, between those unlike one another is adultery. The Gospel of Philip. And I, and I think that's really important right there. I mean, I think that's really, really important. What you, all you've read, even though it's an allegorical kind of manner, is still telling us that that serpent came upon that woman and was an adulterer. And if you find thou shalt not commit adultery, I mean, look at, look at what God says. You have no other gods before me first commandment. That's like right. danger. Absolutely. So don't be listening to the servant. Right. And that thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not cover another man's wife. I mean, this is a major theme running throughout the history of biblical prophecy as well as to the future as the past. Again, this is a parallel there. Uh, and what I was going to mention before is that where the Lord God said unto the servant, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast. And it's interesting that the word cattle was used because you know, we are considered like the cattle or like the sheep or whatever, right. and, and and we're easy to be swayed and led. I mean, cattle are easy to be led into a slaughter, slaughter. the slaughter, the sheep are the same way. So I think that it's interesting that we, if we're not careful, we have to be careful about the bulls and about the, the people who will come upon us. And I think it, it, even it, it kind of gives me chill bumps because I've done research in the cattle mutilations. And oh, how some of that stuff. may tie in to, to all of this as right, well. Right, right, absolutely. Um, but and to the hybrid it, creatures, yes. tree flood, that are no longer in existence. So I, I think we're seeing, again, a parallel of what happened prior to the flood happening now. And if we, if we believe the Bible, which we do, it absolutely. specifically says that in the days of Noah, it's going to be like that at the end of time. Right. And before the before the flood, these kinds of things were happening. These people were, these, these angels were falling. They were coming upon the doors of men. They were having children that were giants. Those giants were killing and pillaging and just destroying. And even eating their wives, it eating, said. Eating everything. I mean, they were totally destroyed. They were bloodthirsty. I mean, look at Cain. Right. Cain was the first person who really shed blood right. on this earth. He was the first, first murderer. First murderer. So well, if you look brother. at all this kind of stuff, you've got to stop and think. That has got to be a trait of Satan. And if exactly. you look at the pagan religions that have gone through history, from the Canaanites, Moloch, all those, they killed, they, they slaughtered. They demanded they, sacrifice. They demanded sacrifice upon sacrifice. their people. And even up through the Mayans, they had right. temples, they built temples, they took Cut people, the up, all those kinds of things. It was bloodletting, constant right. bloodletting. There's and still religions in cultures out there today that do this same right. thing. Right, and, they don't, and really that's why Jesus had to really come and die on the cross to shed his blood. That was to stop even the priests right. that, uh, you know, from way back from having to kill or have a slaughter. Right, right. He stopped that. There's no need to do the slaughter. He Jesus became, the, became lamb. the lamb Absolutely. that was slaughtered for the sins of mankind to get us really back away from all this that happened right. in the Garden of Eden. It is a clean slate as to what really happened with Cain killing Abel. Right, absolutely. In other words, it was like the serpent thought he was going to kill Abel and that would, ever, that would stop mankind from ever having salvation. But as we know in chapter 5, this is very interesting to me. It says that Adam and Eve really had another child. And well, if we, Actually, if we go back to um, chapter um, 4, you find that... Adam knew, it says Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son. But notice how it says, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. And it says, for God said she had appointed me 
another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And then if you look on down, it says in chapter 5, verse 3, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. Again, it had to be a breath. There was no way that could be anything but a breath. And it's specifically saying a son in his own likeness and after his own image, it doesn't say, and he was acquired from the Lord. It says he was like his father. And they called his name Seth. And it says, in the days of Adam after that, Seth was born, he begat sons and daughters. And then, of course, it says Adam lived uh, 930 years and he died. And we know that, that he lived within one, actually one day of the Lord, the Lord being a thousand, a thousand years to one day. But I find it interesting right there that if, if there was a mention of the lineage of Adam, where is it saying in anywhere in the Bible that Cain was Adam's son? Right. I don't I don't and see that. And then why separate the blood lineages in chapter four and right. five? Right. Right. Why hold Cain as a separate lineage of, of Adam? And the other thing is, if you look really look at chapter four and it starts talking about Cain, immediately it says Cain knew his wife they conceived, conceived, and he bare a son named Enoch. And he went out and built a city. And if you understand, builders, that was one thing that God was totally against, and that was building. Absolutely. And that because the builders were the, the cultures that followed the fallen angels. All right. Continuing on with chapter 4 1 and the continuation with uh, Satan having his own, his own bloodline, I want to read a quote that many people, when they read over this, they miss it. And this is from Isaiah chapter 14, because this particular chapter talks about how Satan has his own children. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house, but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet, thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, for they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have a thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot, then shall his yoke depart from off of them, and his burden depart from off of their shoulders. And we know that the Lord sent Joshua into the land of the giants in Bashan to wipe out that evil bloodline and the, the children of the giants. 